Ladies and gentlemen on the Shred Gaming Intercom video, we're going to be discussing the PlayStation 4's CPU performance, and we're also going to be touching on the bandwidth available to the CPU. Now, this is going to be a larger part of my infamous second son uh, post-mortem, and it's going to be part two that this features in, but I do want to cover this really quick in a separate video because... I have a feeling that some of you may miss that because it's obviously going to be part of a much larger breakdown of the whole infamous engine and I'm also unsure if I'm going to be able to get that up today because there's a hell of a lot of work involved and I wanted to make you guys aware of this. So, um, I'm going to be pretty much guessing that you're familiar with the PS4's architecture at this point. If not, then you can go ahead and Google um, you know, the PS4's specifications, or, you know, you can check out the channel, or whatever makes you happy, really. But, um, recently, Sucker Punch have done a, basically, post-mortem analysis of their engine, and they've done this with a few different things at GDC. Um, they did a whole breakdown of their particle system and compute, which is basically what the second part of my infamous second sub postmortem is going to be focused on. Now, during this, they actually mentioned some stuff regarding the PS4's CPU and memory bandwidth, and I'm going to read this out to you guys. They say, and I quote, um, while the CPU has ended up working pretty well, it's still one of our main bottlenecks. It's also less easy to optimize after the fact because of the out-of-order nature. Uh, end quote. And it's actually quite obvious, looking at their slides, that despite the fact that they still can do some more optimizations, they actually admit that readily. It's fairly interesting that they mention that out-of-order can be a little bit of a pain. Now, out-of-order, in case you're... Uh, unfamiliar with the term, it's actually very different from the PS3's cell processor, which was an in-order processor. That basically means that it follows how things are um, set out on from the compiler, and therefore it has a heavy reliance on the compiler actually putting the code in the best order possible, because otherwise basically the CPU can stall while it's waiting to process the right bit of information. Now, in this case, the PS4's CPU is out of order, and therefore it's harder to actually optimize the code, at least according to Sucker Punch. There's this wiggle room there. Now, another caveat, or another, not caveat, but another point. Um, you might be aware that the PlayStation 4's uh, memory bandwidth is 176 gigabytes a second. That's based on the GDDR5 memory on a 256-bit bus. But many of us have suspected that the CPU does not have access to those type of bus speeds, and um, there's been some talk and discussion on this and, you know, what exactly it is. Sony have remained fairly tight-lipped. We do know we have known, rather, that there have been free uh, memory buses inside the PS4. Uh, um, and the one with the most memory bandwidth, of course, uh, directly addresses the GPU, because the GPU is the one that requires it. And so there was a lot of guessing going around about what the CPU memory bus um, you know, memory bandwidth is. And the figures that were being banded about range from about 20 to 30 gigabytes per second. Um, and although we still don't have an exact number, um, Sucker Punch actually state CPU bus width for uh, less than 20 gigabytes per second, 10 times slower than CPU bus. So if you do a little bit of mathematics, it's less than 20, but it's also um, you know around the seven, uh, around the 10 times slower mark than 176 so you could basically say it's between 17.6 and 20 gigabytes per second and this pretty much tallies up what we'd expect the CPU uh, memory bus to be because you've got to remember that it doesn't require so much memory bandwidth as a GPU because well it's not that powerful of a CPU honestly and even high-end desktop CPUs right now aren't necessarily maxing DDR3 memory bus um, a bandwidth available. And so it's likely that um, the memory um, to the CPU in terms of the bus width, or should I say the bus speed, is certainly not going to be a limiting factor in the PlayStation 4's performance. I'm guessing that based on um, both this 
and technical documents as well as Naughty Dog's breakdown. You might remember that we did the Senfo um, analysis. You can actually check that out on the channel as well. I um, would encourage you to do so. So I am going to uh, let you guys go. This The main part of this video, which is going to be the whole post-mortem, the second part, is going to be up hopefully later today or tomorrow. There's a lot of technical stuff that I'm going through, so it's going to take a while for me to kind of finalize it. But in that, we're going to also be talking a lot more about the PS4's GPU performance. They've actually spoken a little bit about that. And then we go more into actually how um, the actual compute setup works for Infamous. It's rather interesting stuff. And there'll probably be a part three as well of the Infamous. But that one's going to be a lot different. That's going to be focused on the character models, assets, post-processing, and all the other shiny things. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll leave you guys to it. Take care and bye for now.